Next, move on to this clip, which I thought was absolutely hilarious. So I've mentioned a few times on here that I find the Gen Z kids to be amazing. I find Gen Z kids to be astonishing. And the reason why I find them more astonishing is their attitude towards work. They have the attitude towards work or towards employment that I've had, but I always was looked at as a bit of a rebel, as a little bit, you know, risque with the way that I approach work in that I never type, I never viewed jobs as like my be all and end all. I always views them as like a means to an end, which is which can have its pros and negatives. I feel like if you're a creative person, it's a good thing to sort of like treat your job as like a means to an end because it allows you to maybe focus more of your attention on the stuff that you actually want to do full time, whether art or creative stuff you want to do. But I feel like on the negative side of things, if you keep looking at your nine to five as a means to an end and not like a serious occupation that you should take seriously and you should work hard on, you can sometimes I take it for granted you can maybe have a bit of a bad attitude towards it which maybe make you feel like you're above the work or whatever it may be which will then lead to issues at the workplace whatever it may be and just is not the right way to kind of navigate life especially as an adult so it can be you know there's some pros and negatives on both ends but in general when I approach my work or whatever employment that I have I'm usually somebody that's very very strict about my hours outside of work I am really, really protective of it because I feel like in some workplaces, unfortunately, I feel like if you're somewhat competent, because there's not a lot of competent people out there in workplaces or people that, you know, there's a lot of people that go above and beyond to do a good job. I feel like when you do do that, sometimes it unfortunately does require you then to do more of it or no, you're expected to do more of it, which then can you take up more of your time. And sometimes it can then start eating away into your free time. And free time, I would say, is any time before or after work. But sometimes when you're working in certain places, depending on how you want to navigate it, it can be very beneficial to sometimes start early and maybe end later. If you want to get a raise, if you want a promotion, if you want to be in the good books of the owner or the founder, if you want to make sure that you're not the first one fired, all these little things help, like going to, going to um, office drinks, going to the Christmas parties, you know, um, taking part in the fucking secret centers. All these things, unfortunately, do help to somewhat protect yourself in workplaces where it's very cutthroat. And sometimes in most workplaces anyway, it's not really about the level of the quality of work that you do. It's mostly about your personal relationships they have with people and shit. All that stuff's important. But I do respect the fact that Gen Z kids don't give a fuck about all that shit. And they start work when they're meant to start work. And they end it when they're meant to end it. So if they're meant to start at nine, they start at nine, not 8.55. And if they're meant to end at six, they end at six, not fucking 6.10, 6.15. I admire that. But I think this clip made me feel a little bit like, it made me kind of question my stance because I feel like this kid might have been a little bit in the wrong, a little bit in the wrong, but I'd love to know what you guys think. I'll play the whole entire thing. First, it's the managers or the owners having their opinion, and then you'll hear from the employee replying to the owners. I asked to come in for an 8 a.m. meeting. My Gen Z new hire said, Ugh, sorry, I can't make it. I have a workout class. Should this be allowed? My visceral reaction was, are you fucking kidding me? No, fully, like anger, typing this out. I was like, please. Like my hand's shaking and it's not from the caffeine. You just started this job. I don't give a flying shit about your workout class. Also, an 8 a.m. workout class is too late. Workout at six, yep. maybe seven. Hi, yeah, Natalie. So um, we can talk about this more later. But so as you can see, the, the managers are complaining that their new hire, Gen Z hire, wouldn't wasn't able to make an 88 meeting that they only i guess announced the day before or a couple of days before that because they had a gym class they couldn't you know last minute.com come to an 88 meeting and now it looks like the employee replies back to that tweet to that podcast clip whatever on tiktok themselves so this is a very gen z current era type of issue where your boss has a podcast basically airs you out on the pod in public and then you get to reply on tiktok it's fucking hilarious but I'm going to address this now. It was made very clear during the interview process that the working hours for this position is between 9 to 5 p.m. Eastern time, and I am on Eastern time. I made that very clear with HR because I have commitments outside of work. I go to the gym, I work out because I care about my health. Sure, I can make a sacrifice to go to an 8 a.m. meeting had I known at least a week before that I needed to go at 8 a.m., not a day before. Also, my workout class starts at 7.30, not at 8, but I didn't know that I needed to tell you that. Okay, let's just say I skipped the gym. Two things. When can I expect you to reimburse me for my class? And two, are you going to be paying me from 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. or at the very least, let me leave at 4 p.m.? 
Natalie, if your answer to both of those are no, then there's no discussion needed. I will see you at nine o'clock today. Also, yeah, I sent an email to HR about this and sent them the link to that TikTok video. So um, just to make things clear. Now, according to some people online, this kid actually wasn't the one that's involved in the situation. And the actual um, question that I was reading or the actual thing that the managers were talking about was more of an email um, from another person, like a viewer, basically. But they lent their, obviously, they, they spoke about it um, from a manager's point of view. So it's basically a hypothetical situation. Um, but they obviously kind of, you know, related it back to something they obviously have went through themselves. But let's just, you just take it on face value itself anyway. Because the details are boring and we just want to go on what we basically saw. I think the Gen Z kid is totally within the right to be like, hey, um, you know, an ATM an ATM meeting that gets announced lastminute.com shouldn't be something that I should drop all my shit for to attend. Especially if you're telling me lastminute.com. My hours of working are nine to five or nine to six. You should do meetings like everybody else does within the hours of when I'm meant to be working. That's how you basically, I think as even as a manager as a company, to ensure everybody attends, you should probably try to do your meetings within the hours that people are working as opposed to outside of those hours. Most likely, that's what I would do anyway, right? And the fact that people don't do that is odd. But I feel like unfortunately that does speak to the work culture there. And what that speaks to is that if you make that effort to attend those meetings, it will probably put you in the good graces of some people involved in that company and that could probably help you long term if you want to get a promotion if you want a pay rise if you want more responsibility if you want to move to another department that could probably help you because unfortunately again like i said before very rarely in workplaces is your are you rewarded for your levels of work it's mostly about things that aren't really to do with actually what you do day to day it's mostly about how nice of a person you are how well how well you get along with certain people maybe if you hand in your work on time but it's really to do with the quality of your work so maybe focusing on how you are seen by certain people can actually help you in the long term but i think for yourself as an employee you have to be pretty selfish and quite clear about what you can and what you're willing to do and what you're not willing to do and you also have to be aware though of the consequences that could have ramifications so if you do say no to those sort of situations you have to know that that could also mean the beginning of the end for you and that employment in that place they can make it hard for you um you could maybe just find yourself not being involved in a group because one thing as well that i find out about workplaces when other people see that you're not the favored one when other people notice that you're maybe a bit of an outcast they tend to kind of pull away from you also because they don't want people to view them as an outcast as well so they kind of just leave you alone so you end up being kind of on your own little island so you have to kind of know that and of course the other caveat of this is that the person started new so when you started new you kind of want to impress anyway so there's always that kind of pressure to try to impress by doing everything and everything everything under the sun sorry to make people know that you're willing to kind of roll up your sleeves and work hard but i feel like fundamentally at its core a management or company wherever it may be calling an atm meeting is con is kind of similar to gross misconduct really to pull an eight may like there's nothing there's no meeting that is necessary for 8 a.m i don't care there is none even if the company has to go under just announce it when we get in first thing there's no reason why a company should need to have a meeting at 8 a.m if you don't start at 8 a.m it makes no sense and usually i feel like especially at that sort of time i don't know about you but most companies i've worked for in most offices most human beings especially normies are not morning people most normies are not morning people they always come in complaining that they're tired holding a coffee cup in their hand like a crack addict shaking and shit people only wake up until about 11 or a.m in the morning so having an atm meeting is dumb because most people won't be on it anyway so you're not going to really get much out of it and most people won't actually even turn up so it's dumb so it kind of doesn't really make any sense but i love the i love the flipping balls on the gen z kids especially when you started new to be like no i'm not doing it or if I am doing it, are you going to reimburse me for my flipping class? I couldn't imagine, even in my most staunchest times of being a rebel at workplaces, I couldn't ever imagine telling my employer that I want them to reimburse me for my class. But then again, I'm also the person at workplaces or when I was doing interviews, I would always be very clear about having very, about having a very, you know, um, busy schedule 
um, you know, outside of work. Sometimes it can be a detriment. Sometimes I'm sure I've not gotten jobs because they might have seen me as somebody that lacked focus. Maybe I'm jumping around too much, doing too many things outside of work and it's not going to make me committed to what I'm doing at work. That might be an issue. But I've always made it very clear to be very honest about the things I do outside of work and be very clear that, hey, these things I do outside of work, I, I love and enjoy and I'm not going to skip or you know miss them because of a work thing. But I also know that it kind of hurts. And I know one example is that one of the previous jobs that I had, which I had to leave in the end because, you know, it just was getting a bit too sticky and I wasn't really, I didn't really ingratiate myself with um, people over there. I was working in one place um, doing kind of social media management, basically the stuff that I've already done in terms of marketing or whatever it may be in terms of my experience. And when I started, there happened to be like a very organic viral moment for the company where one of their ads went crazy viral, on, I think on Twitter or something, right? And of course, at the time they went viral, um, everyone was trying to capitalize on that virality and that engagement and basically trying to put some money on ads and shit, whatever, just thinking of ideas. But it happened quite organically on the, imagine on like a Thursday afternoon, oh my God, this ad's all over fucking socials. Everyone's calling us about it, blah, blah, blah. Um, but then on that same day, I think it was a Friday, it had to be a Friday, I had to DJ somewhere. And the place I was DJing at, I feel like was not close to where my workplace at. So it's like an hour journey. Usually that wasn't the case. Usually because I was always working within like trendy East London, like, you know, EC, East Central London, Liverpool Street area, all the places I was DJing in were usually within like a 20 minute radius of like Liverpool Street Station. But this particular gig that I had was like an hour away. So I had to leave on time, like at five. I couldn't leave like at half five or at six or even. But on that same day, that I had to go and DJ <laughs> this organic this viral this campaign that the company I was working for went viral organically on, on social media they're trying to capitalize it and obviously me being the social media manager you know they're looking for me for ideas and I have to execute some of those things but I had to leave and, but I'm also somebody that doesn't like to explain like I don't want to sit there and kind of like almost beg for my supper to let like it's no like I finish at five anyway so I just started getting ready and going right and i left i said hey guys i gotta go anyway bye and i could feel the the atmosphere change as i was leaving and i knew instantly when i left that building or when i got into a lift to go downstairs i kind of knew this is going to be the end for me even i didn't do anything wrong technically i did, I did nothing wrong to, technically i did nothing wrong i was well within my rights to leave at that time because that's my time contracted that i have to leave but the fact that I left in the midst of those of that kind of like powwow of like, hey, what should we do to, to kind of capitalize on this kind of marketing thing? Da, 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 da. The fact that I left at that time definitely put me in a bad light and definitely was one of the reasons why I ended up having to leave there because, you know, I didn't really enamor myself with people in that company and they probably didn't see me as somebody that was serious, blah, 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 blah. So unfortunately again it's, it shouldn't matter like this it really shouldn't because the quality of your work should be important people should respect your free time all these things should be important but you have to be really cautious of it at workplaces that it's very rarely about what you know and what you don't know it's more so about you know how you act how you conduct yourself if people like you all this sort of nonsense shit that doesn't really matter is what really matters the most in corporate worlds and jobs in certain cases and you have to be very um knowledgeable knowledgeable of that and move accordingly but if it's not the case i think you also need to be clear when you start places at work i think most people know this i'm just speaking you know talking to the air really here but i feel like it's really important to be very clear about the things that you do outside of work and if you don't have to do anything but you want to be protective of your time i think it's also very important <laughs> to maybe lie <laughs> about some shit you should probably lie about some shit because you know, having your entire schedule be open and free um, to do anything and everything for a company, they will take advantage of it and they will exploit you. So be very wary of like saying, yeah, I can do whenever, I'm free whenever, I can do this, I can do that. Because, you know, you say that too often, someone's going to take you up on it. And if you're competent, you know, and you're not a fucking redact, people are going to want to use you more often because you know what you're fucking doing. So I feel like, you know, be very be very careful of that, especially living in a place like London or in any sort of like Western country where the cost of living is super high anyway. Like the last thing you want to be doing is like killing yourself at work. And then, you know, you're not really gaining much from it anyway because you're still fucking earning the same amount of money, but then you're working over time. It just doesn't make any sense. So I love Gen Z kids for standing on their shit and not budging when it comes to all of that. I absolutely love it.